Hey everyone, so I'm busy working on a pretty big video involving my car, an Arduino, and a Raspberry Pi, and I figured while that video is being produced, why don't I release a quick, boring video on how to use Fusion 360. You can see here my key fob is really messed up, it needs new buttons, it needs a respray, and I figured why don't I release a quick video on how to actually design a button in Fusion 360 and then print it. So in this video, the first thing I'm going to do is take apart the key fob and solder on a new button, and then give it a repaint, and then finally we'll take a long look at how to use Fusion 360 to actually design a button. Okay, so now with all of that out of the way, we can get started with the actual 3D design in Fusion 360. So the first thing I've done here is I've loaded up Fusion 360, and I'm going to create a new component in this sketch I'm in. And I'll just go ahead and name that component Key Button with a small n for some reason. Then we're going to click on this little arrow here to make sure that we can see the origin. We'll click on the little light bulb and it will light up the origin. You can see it's over here. Now what we want to do here is we want to build this 3D object in this, this sketch. And the way we do that is somewhat similar to how you would do it in Tinkercad, if you've used Tinkercad before. You kind of build on with different shapes to create your end object. And that's what we're going to do here. Except in Tinkercad, everything is kind of pre-extruded. It already has body, you know. It's, um, you, you add something and it's already quite large. Here you create a sketch, which is a 2D object, and then you extrude it to make it 3D. I'll show you what that looks like now. So first thing you want to do is you want to click on this bottom plane here which is a plane we want to work in. You can work on any plane you want. I just want to work in the bottom plane. I'll right click and I'll click create sketch. Now it's facing the bottom plane there and I can start drawing my sketch. Now I want to create a circle because my key fobs uh, button is circular. So I'll go into sketch, I'll go over circle and I want to create a center diameter circle. This just means it will uh, increase in size from the diameter outward, making it easier to kind of measure. Then I'm going to click on this little dot in the middle, which is the center of my sketch, just to keep everything in the center. I could do it anywhere, but this just kind of helps center everything. And I'll click there, and then I can create my circle there. Now I know because I measured my key fob that my circle uh, for the button is about 11.7 millimeters. So I'll just type in 11.7, and there's my key fob circle. Now again, like I said before, you'll see here, this is just a, let me just zoom in, this is just a 2D object. Now if I want to give it some mass, I can click on Q, or you can click extrude up here, I'm going to click Q, and I can give it mass. So I will know that my key fob circle needs to be about 5 millimeters tall, so I'll type 5, and now my object has some mass. Now another thing I want to add is we have to add a way for it to not just fall out when it goes back in, so we have to add a kind of a bottom part to it. Um, so it hooks into the, uh, the, key, the bottom of the key fob, the, the same way the old one did, the rubber one. And to do that, I'm going to scroll to the very bottom of this. I'm going to right click on it, just like we did before. And again, I'm going to create a new sketch now. So I'm going to do something else here. Now I can start doing some more designs here. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to create a rectangle, which will kind of create like a cross on my uh, my button. So they can, it kind of gets stuck behind it. You'll see what I mean in, in a different video that I'll hopefully add in here. Um, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to go into rectangle, and I'm going to create a two-point rectangle. And I'm just going to draw it there roughly, and then I'll anchor it somewhere later on. Um, let's say that my diameter of my, or my length of my rectangle should be, um, let's say, 1.5 mils. So that there's a nice amount of mass for the 3D printer to print. And I'll make it a nice round number. I'll make it um, 15 mils there. Then we want to make sure that my diameter to my edge here is the same as my diameter to my edge here because otherwise it's, it's uneven. So I'm going to click on D, and I'm going to click on the center, then I'm going to click on this line here, and it will show me, oh, let me click there again, it'll show me that that distance is 6.8. Now if I click Escape, and I click D, and then on this line here, I'll see that it is 8.12. So they're not the same distance, so I've got to change that distance now. So I'm going to click D there, 
then D there, and again I'm going to click there, and I can now change this value to whatever I want. So let's say I'll make this, um, I think, 7.2, and this one should now be 7.8, so i got to make this one 7.5, I think, oops, 7.5. Now, if I check the other one, did I get it right? There we go. So they're both 7.5. So now that rectangle is exactly in the middle of that circle, except for just these two parts here. So now if I take it, my D again, I click D, and I click there, I'll notice that that is 0 0.993 millimeters. And from here to here, see, is 0 0.5. So I need to anchor that as well. So I'll click there, and then I will click there and I can change this to let's say I'm not sure this is correct but 0 comma 65 how much is my bottom one now uh, 0 comma 85 so I should make this 0 comma 75 and that should be right in the middle now yeah 0 comma 0 five. so now this rectangle here that we've just created is exactly in the middle perfectly lined up and again we can extrude it so I'm going to click on Q then I'm going to click on all the things that I want to extrude out. Now, if I click here, um, I can extrude this piece here, or if I want, I can just click here and here, because these are the two pieces that I want to extrude. And then I'm going to give them some mass. I'll give them, let's say, one millimeter of mass that way, and I'll click OK. And then it becomes one object. And then you can see our button starts to take shape. And again, I'll do the exact same thing for this side here. Now, you also notice that this can't fit like this because the uh, button kind of extrudes a little bit out. So we need to create some space in the bottom here for that top of the button to go into. So I'll click on that. I'll click create sketch. And then again, I could just go here and hit circle, but I'm gonna use a shortcut key, which is C. I'll click on circle, and again, I'm gonna click on the center point, so I know that I'm exactly in the center of this, because our first circle is in the center as well. So I click on there. Now I think I'll make this one, let's say, eight millimeters, just so we have a nice, a lot of clearance over here, and this one we can make hollow. Now I'm gonna click here, and then I'm gonna click Q. Now, you may remember Q is the way of adding mass to an object, but if we take uh, an object and click Q on it, and we move it into another object, it doesn't join, it actually cuts. So it removes mass. So now you see, if I go up to here, it's going to remove mass. If I went all the way through, it would remove mass. If I click here, and I click join, instead of cut, it'll become an object again. But I want to cut this, actually. So I'm going to go back to cut. And then I think I will make it, let's say, let's make it minus two mils up. And there we go. Now we got some hole uh, in the bottom for that button uh, little extrusion to sit on. And from there, we can just 3D print this. I mean, if you want to get really fancy, you could create a sketch on this top part here and maybe make like a little indent for a lock um, if, you, if you really want to. I'm not going to because I want to draw my locks on afterwards. But this is the kind of way you could do it. And again, I'm just going to extrude it, and I'm going to go negative 0.5. You know, and you can have a little lock icon. This is not a very good one because it's very rushed. But that's how you would create an indented icon. Or you could create it um, as an icon that comes out. But again, it's entirely up to you. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now, I'm quite happy with this how it is. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just print this. So I'm going to scroll over that. I'm going to click on my options. And I'm going to click 3D print. Uh, I don't want to use this uh, 3D print utility, so I'm not going to take that box. And I'll see, there we go. It's just loaded in, and I'll click OK. And now I get a chance to save it to my desktop. Now here I'm just dropping into my slicer of choice, which is Simplify 3D. And I'm just going to take a look, make sure everything looks right. It does look good. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is just go into the settings and make sure it is going to print on high quality mode, and then print to 100% infill. We can do this because it's really small. It's only going to take about five minutes anyway. And then we'll take a look here, and everything looks right. And the last thing to check is that it is indeed going to print some supports there at the bottom to make sure there's no overhangs.
And then here's the print. I'm really happy with the outcome. It printed really well, even with the small parts. The only downside is you can see the lining on it of how it printed, which is evident in all 3D prints. Uh, the easy way to cover that is just to kind of sand it down a little bit with some very high grit sandpaper and then paint it. And then the last thing I did here is I just popped the 3D printed keys into the key fob. Um, took a bit of finessing, but eventually they went in. And just like that, the key fob is ready for the circuit board. Yeah, and that's how you'd use Fusion 360. I hope you guys stick around for the next video, and thanks so much for watching.